We move on to question number 21. Question number 21, you find linear programming. Oh, linear programming. So these, these topics will never miss in paper one. You just have to help them. So with linear programming, mm, with linear programming, you are told, you are given this diagram, then you are told to find inequalities which describe this region. So inequalities which you are taught to find, they are actually equations of the lines for these three lines. One, two, three. So this line is the simplest of them all. Its equation of the line is y is equal to x. So according to the shaded region, its inequality will be y is less than or equal to x. Why is it less than? Why less than? It is less than because the region that we want it is on the lesser side of the line. So it is less than. Why less than or equal to? It is less than or equal to because the line, it is a body line. It is not dotted. So we are done with this line. We come to the other line. The other line. Let's do this line. So this line has got coordinates 0, 0,2 and 8,0. So 0, 0,2 and 8,0. In order for us to find the inequality for this line, we have to find its equation of the line first. And to find its equation of the line, we need to find the, its gradient first. And gradient is given by this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our y2 is 0, our y1 is 2. Our x2 is 8, our x1 is... Our x1, no, our x1 is 0. So 2, 0 minus 2, it's a negative 2. 8 minus 0 is 8. Negative 2 over 8, you have negative 1 over 4. This is your gradient. So to find the equation of the line, you employ this formula. y is equal to mx plus c. m, that's your gradient, c, y intercept, then x and y, they are just coordinates. So, where there is m, we put negative 1 over 4x plus y-intercept where this line meets with the y-axis, that's the y-intercept, which is 2. So, this is the second inequality. But why is it greater than or equal to? It is greater than because this region... It is on the greater side of this line. If you follow this line, numbers on this side, they are reducing. So this is the lesser part, but this is the greater part. And the line, the region we want, it is on the greater part. So we'll put greater than. Why greater than or equal to? Greater than or equal to because the line is not dotted. It is a full line. It is a board line. So no wonder we put greater than or equal to. Hope it's visible enough. So we are done with two lines. The third line, it is actually this line with the points 8,0 and 5,5. .5. So we find the gradient first. After finding the gradient, we'll find it to be 5 over 3, negative 5 over 3. We replace that gradient in our formula. Then we need to solve for C. In order for us to solve for C, we get any pair of coordinates. Suppose we get this pair. Our Y is 0. Then our x is 8. Solving for c, we have c to be 40 over 3. Then we replace 40 over 3 into c. So our equation will be y is equal to negative 5 over 3x plus 40 over 3. So we need to replace the equal sign now with the appropriate inequality symbol. So we consider this line. <coughs> the region which is unshaded, it is actually on the lesser side of the line this is the greater part and this is the lesser part of the line so this is the lesser part of the line we're going to put less than why less than or equal to because the line is full is not dotted so in summary you have all your equations of the lines hope this is clear we go to the next question which is question number 22 so question number 22 
you are given this statement. Given that a right angled triangle, I've drawn it here, right angled triangle x, y, and z is a 90 degrees angle, mm -hmm. then sine x is equal to 4 over 5. Find the value of cos x. So how are you going to find the value of cos x? First of all, how did they find the value of sine x? So sine x, you find it to be opposite over hypotenuse. So they are saying sine x is 4 over 5, meaning the opposite is actually 4 and the hypotenuse is 5. So if the opposite is 4 and the hypotenuse is 5, let us find the... Uh, let us find the cos x. How are, we find, how are we going to find the cos x? In order for us to find the cos x, we are saying cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So there will be need for us to solve for the adjacent. In order for us to solve for the adjacent, we are going to employ Pythagoras theorem. We use the Pythagoras theorem, we solve for the adjacent, we find it to be 3. Then we replace it in our cos theta. So our cos theta will be equal to adjacent 3, hypotenuse 5. So our cos x, it's actually 3 over 5. And that remains to be the answer. The B part of the question is part of calculus and quadratic quadratic functions yeah probably quadratic functions quadratic functions so quadratic functions the diagram below shows the sketch of a graph which meets the x-axis at negative 4 and 2 find the equation of the graph how do we find the equation of the graph simple i'll give you a simple method to use so the graph cuts the axis x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to 2 so when this x negative 4, when this negative 4 comes this side, it will become x plus 4. When this 2 comes this side, it becomes x minus 2. Just these two expressions, you multiply them. Once you multiply them, you find the equation of the line. So x times x, x squared. x times negative 2, negative 2x. 4 times x, 4x. 4 times negative 2, negative 8. Like terms, when you evaluate them, you are going to get a positive 2x. So your equation is y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. That's the equation, and that's your final answer. <coughs> the question number two on this part, it says find the coordinates of the turning point. So coordinates of the turning point... Coordinates of the turning point. Let's find the coordinate of x first. To find the coordinate of x, you employ this formula. x is equal to negative b over 2a. So negative b over 2a. What is the value of b? Remember, this is a, then that is b, and that is c. So the value of b here, the value of b, it is 2. So negative 2 over 2, what is a? The value of a is actually 1. So negative 2 over 2 times 1. Negative 2 over 2 times 1, the answer is negative 1. So this is the value of x, negative 1. Let's find the value of y. To find the value of y, we use this equation, and where there is x, we put negative 1. And we find y to be negative 9. So the coordinates of the turning point, it is actually negative 1, comma, negative 9. Negative 1, comma, negative 9. But the equation of the turning point, it is actually y is equal to negative 9. Get the y part. And that remains your answer. Hope this is clear. We move to question number... 23, which appears to be the last question, and um, uh, travel, traveling graphs. So, the information on this graph, it reads, the diagram below shows the speed time graph, speed time graph <coughs> of a particle. The particle started off from rest, from zero here, and accelerated uniformly for 10 seconds, for 10 seconds. It then traveled at a constant speed of 20 seconds so for 20 seconds and then declared to rest. Yeah, so this is what is being described. 
First question, find the speed. We find this speed V. If the particle reached its acceleration, if its acceleration was 2 meters per second squared in the first 10 seconds. So in this first 10 seconds, if the particle's acceleration was 2, what is this value of V? So in order for us to find the value of V, we need to employ the method we use to find acceleration. So how do we find acceleration? So acceleration, this is how we find it. Acceleration is equal to vertical distance over horizontal distance. So this acceleration is equal to vertical distance over horizontal distance. Now the acceleration we've been given that it is 2. Our vertical distance is the distance that we need to find, which is x. Then horizontal distance, it is 10. So what would be the value of x? We cross multiply, we find x to be 20. So the speed there, the value of v, it is actually 20 meters per second. That's the answer. Question B. Given that the total distance covered was 750 meters, find the value of t in the diagram. What is this value? What number is here? If the total distance covered from here up to here is 750. So in order for us to find that value, what we need to know is how did they find this area? This area, they found it using, oh, the this distance, they found it using the formula of area under this graph. And when we look at the graph, that is a trapezium. And area for a trapezium is equal to area is equal to 1 over 2a plus bh. Area, we are told is 75, that is the distance, 1 over 2. A is the distance from here up to here, which is 20, because we say 30 minus 10. So from here up to here is 20. Then B, it is the distance from here up to here, and that's what we are looking for, B. So we'll leave it to be B. Then height is the distance from here up to here, which is 20, the one we found. So solving this now, half of 20, that is 10. 10, we divided 10 to divide it in 750, you are going to get a 75. So you have 20 plus B is equal to 75. So B will remain here, 75, 20 will go this side and becomes a negative. So B will be equal to 75 minus 20, and B is that 55. Therefore, by finding B, we've solved for T, which is 55 seconds. And that's the number we're supposed to be here. The last question, guys, for this past paper was what was the speed at 40 seconds? So the speed at 40 seconds, we know that 40 seconds is somewhere here. So there's no need for us to find the distance at 40 seconds, then start confusing ourselves. No. This we've been told is a speed time graph. It's not a velocity time graph. <coughs> If it was a velocity time graph, we would have been required to find the distance at 40 seconds. But since it's a speed time graph, so the speed that they, are, they want is the average speed, of which is given by this formula. Speed is equal to distance over time. The distance for the journey is 750. The time, they want us to find the speed when time was 40. You just divide 750 by 40, you say 75 over 4 meters per second. Don't bother dividing, getting all those... Uh, decimal numbers, you don't have a calculator, you may waste time, just express it in a fraction form as 75 over 4 meters per second, and that's the speed. Hope you guys, you have enjoyed solving with us. Yeah, so these are the answers for the 2018 GCE Paper 1. Look out for more videos on this same channel.